Good evening and, wel and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. If you would join us and please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Goskowiak. Here. Councilmember Ray Rauer. Here. Councilmember Hernandez Jr. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Carlson. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Thank you. Uh, why don't we adopt this evening's agenda to start out? So moved. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Griscoviak. Any corrections or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the agenda is adopted. And we are up to the approval of the minutes from the March 1st meeting. Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Griscoviak. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 1st, 2022. I'll second. We have a motion by Griscoviak, second by Hernandez Jr. Any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. And those, those minutes are approved. One abstention, Councilmember Geisler. You got it in there. Yeah. All right. And we have um, nine items on our consent agenda this evening. Uh, the very first item is item two on our agenda this evening, and that's to approve a master consulting agreement with Samba Tech Incorporated. From time to time, from time to time, the city retains consultants for professional engineering services to assist with city projects. Typically, the city contracts with firms possessing expertise in specific areas that cannot be provided by city forces or to supplement existing city services as opposed to relying on continuing service agreements that are prepared by each consulting firm, staff previously initiated a city master consulting agreement. And at this time, staff seeks uh, uh, to add Samba Tech Incorporated into the city consultant <coughs> pool. And so our first item will be to add Samba Tech Incorporated to the city's consultant pool and authorize appropriate staff to execute such agreement. And the next item on our agenda, which is item two on the consent, uh, is to approve the Noka Hennepin Drug Task Force Joint Powers Agreement. The Coon Rapids Police Department has been a member of the Noka Hennepin Narcotics and Violent Crimes Task Force, DTF, since its inception. Current members of the DTF are the police departments of Anoka, Blaine, Champlin, Columbia Heights, Coon Rapids, Fridley, Maple Grove, Ramsey, Rogers, and the Anoka County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office has requested a word, a word change in the Joint Powers Agreement necessitating the update. Um, it's just some new language introduced in this case. The one word change is on page five and the word supervision was changed to oversight. While this change seems insignificant, it had an impact on the labor agreement in place at the Anoka County Sheriff's Office. Thus, their request, there is no impact to Coon Rapids Police Department for this change. So we're looking to approve the 2022 Joint Powers Agreement with the Anoka Hennepin Narcotics and Violent Crimes Task Force. Next on our consent agenda is to accept a stormwater sewer easement from Conforti Holdings, LLC. Conforti Holdings received conditional site plan approval to construct a building expansion and other site improvements at 8945 Evergreen Boulevard. As part of the approval, drainage and utility easements need to be vacated and a new easement reestablished. The existing easement is being vacated by the council under a separate action, so a new easement has been provided by the property owner to the city. So we're looking to accept the stormwater easement from Conforti Holdings LLC for property located at 8945 Evergreen Boulevard. Next item on our agenda, which is actually item five on the agenda, um, is to adopt resolution 22-41, approving the safety commission appointments. Kenneth Uko, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, and David Blinko, same, same apology, 
submitted applications for the Safety Commission. After discussions with the applicants, the Safety Commission recommended their appointments to the Commission. Each appointment fills an existing vacancy with the Safety Commission with terms ending on different dates. The Safety Commission recommended Kenneth Uko to fill the term ending December 31st, 2024, and David Blinko to fill the term ending December 31st, 2023. So we're looking to adopt Resolution 22-41, appointing Kenneth Uko and David Blinko to the Safety Commission with terms as previously stated. Uh, next item on our agenda is to authorize participation in the Partners in Energy program. Uh, Coon Rapids has the opportunity to participate in Excel Energy's Partners in Energy program. Partners in Energy provides communities with free services to develop an energy action plan and assistance with implementing that plan. Each community has its own unique energy needs and priorities and Partners in Energy tailors its services to complement each community's vision. Um, the plan development phase will last four to six months and will involve convening an energy action team of internal and external stakeholders to create shared focus areas for energy efficiency. The final product will be an energy action plan that includes an overview of where Coon Rapids currently stands in regard to energy use, a list of focus areas and associated strategies, and a suggested work plan for implementation. <coughs> There is no cost to participate other than a dedication of staff time, and the city can ultimately craft a plan that reflects local needs and priorities. Uh, so we're looking to authorize participation in the Partners in Energy program. Next item on our consent agenda, it's the sixth item on our consent agenda and the seventh item on our agenda, is to authorize application to the Metropolitan Council Water Efficiency Grant Program. Um, we're looking to apply for funding through the Met Council's Water Efficiency Grant Program to incentivize the purchase of smart irrigation controllers for residents. The city's matching portion of the grant would come from the Water Fund. So we're looking to authorize an application to the Metropolitan Council's Water Efficiency Grant Program. And the next item is to adopt resolution 22-42, approving the Parks and Recreation Commission appointments. Kelsey Brote and I think this is pronounced Wade Demmer, <laughs> submitted applications, I'm sorry, Wade, I had <laughs> submitted applications for the Parks and Recreation Commission. After discussions with the applicants, the Parks and Recreation Commission recommended appointing Kelsey Brote and Wade Demmer to the commission. <coughs> Each appointment fills an existing vacancy with the Parks and Recreation Commission with terms ending December 31st, 2023. Uh, so we're looking to adopt resolution 22-42, appointing Kelsey Brote and Wade Demmer to the Parks and Recreation Commission with terms expiring December 31st, 2023. Uh, we have two items left on the consent agenda. This one is to approve amendment to an agreement with the Joint Law Enforcement Council for the Fire Records System Manager. Um, the FPC is a collaboration between the fire protection agencies in Anoka County to reduce costs to taxpayers by providing the economy of scale for projects all of the entities have in common. The FPC operates much the same way for the fire portion of the PSDS, I'm just going to... Public not even, safety data system. Thank you, there public you safety data system, as the JLEC... Joint Law Enforcement Council. All right, well, that's the Council Member Johnson would jump on that again. Just um, testing you all to see. I, know. <laughs> I happen to know that one. <laughs> um, uh, as the JLEC does for the police portion of the system, elements of the PSDS project include dispatch software, police and fire record creation and management, evidence management, and training management. Uh, to fully support the system, the JLEC slash FPC executed an agreement with the city in December of 2017 for the city to host a full-time fire system manager services position to assist with the administration of the fire portion of the public safety data system. The city entered into the agreement with the JLEC, but ultimately FPC reimburses the city for 100% of the costs 
associated with this position, including salary, benefits, and equipment costs. The benefit to the uh, the benefit to the position. Um, uh, hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm skipping a line here. The benefit to the city of Coon Rapids, which has the largest individual fire department in the county, is to have the proposed position be an immediate resource for the city's public safety data systems needs. The initial agreement expired on December 31st, 2021, and all parties are interested in extending the arrangement, so the proposed amendment would extend the agreement for an additional five years until December 31st, 2026. It would also automatically renew for an additional five-year period unless either of the parties gives a 90-day written notice prior to the expiration date. All terms of the original agreement will remain in place. So we're looking to approve the amendment to the agreement for fire management services with the Anoka County Joint Law Enforcement Council and authorize the mayor and city manager to execute the amendment. Mm -hmm. The last item on our consent agenda is to approve a master consulting agreement with Apex Facility Solutions, LLC. This is very similar to the other item. From time to time, the city retains consultants for professional engineering services to assist with city projects. And at this time, we're looking uh, to approve, to add Apex Facility Solutions, LLC into the city consultant pool. So let's see, so we're looking at the city council add Apex Facility Solutions, LLC to the city's consultant pool and authorize appropriate staff to execute such agreement. Your, Your Honor. Honor. Council Wait. Member um, Ray Rower. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Ray Rower, second by Johnson. Any discussion or questions? Thank you for not dividing all of that up among us. <laughs> Nine <laughs> items on the consent agenda. It was a little overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Griscoviak. I have a question for uh, Mr. Brody on the, uh, the uh, Joint Law Enforcement Council and Fire Protection Record System. The reimbursement to the city is 50-50. Is, is it 50-50 from the Joint Law Enforcement Council and Fire Protection Council? My understanding and um, I didn't, is that it's all by the Fire Protection Council, so I don't know if... Uh, Either of the other chiefs have more to add to that, but that's my understanding. Um, okay. So it's going to it's going to operate the exact same way it's been operating for the initial three years. Okay. I just noticed that that was they noted them both in there in the, in the reimbursement, and as noted in here, I mean, Coon Rapids does as, contributes the largest to the Fire Protection Council. We are the largest fire department in the county, so that makes sense. But I just uh, wanted to know if there was a joint reimbursement, as it was stated in here. Good okay. clarity on that, if I could. All right. Um, do, you, do you need an answer before you vote? Or you okay? I don't think I need an answer before okay. I vote. It just was something that jumped out at me. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any other discussion or questions on the consent agenda? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that is adopted and approved. We are up to item 11 on our agenda. Okay which is to hold a public hearing and consider the 2022-1 miscellaneous assessment levy. And the way this works is um, the, the hearing assessment appeals will include a hearing before the Board of Adjustment and Appeals before City Council adoption. The City Council still must open a public hearing as required by state statutes. However, at that hearing, which is this hearing, the City Council will collect written appeals and refer appellants to the Board of Adjustment and Appeals for their review and recommendation. Uh, Mr. Stemwell, is there anything else on that? Or you uh, Mayor Council, nope, that is accurate. Um, this is our, our standard process um, by which uh, folks are able to submit that. Um, and it'll be heard by the Board of Adjustment. They'll make a recommendation. And then Council will have the opportunity to review those recommendations and make a final decision. Um, primarily, these are for things like property maintenance, citations, things of that nature that have um, uh, been levied but not paid and would end up on property taxes if they are not. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, does council have any questions before we open the public hearing? All right. So we will open the public hearing for miscellaneous assessments. If anybody wants to appeal those, basically this is your time to get it in writing turned into our city clerk um, in order to be heard on the May 5th Board of Adjustment and Appeals. 
I'll ask one more time, is anybody here to appear before the, uh, to turn in their appeal for the public hearing for this? All right, we're gonna close that and we're gonna adopt some resolutions. And Mr. Brody, can these be all done at once? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 22-44, adopting the 2022 sub one miscellaneous special assessments, unopposed one year. Adopt resolution 22-45, adopting the 2022 sub one miscellaneous special assessments, unopposed three year. Adopt resolution 22-46, adopting the 2022 sub one miscellaneous special assessments, unopposed five year. And adopt resolution 22-47, adopting the 2022 sub one miscellaneous special assessments, unopposed 10 year. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Carlson. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I think it's just clear that our Board of Adjustments and Appeals meets on May 5th, and they make a recommendation, and then um, we hear it again on our May 17th Council meeting. Right. Your Honor, just one other Mr. item, too. That, those final figures might be, a little, might be adjusted a bit after the fact. I know we had one yeah. appeal come in uh, late this afternoon. Okay. Okay. So... I'll amend the motion to be amounts corrected by our city clerk following the end of the written appeal collection. How's that? Is that work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good job. Thanks. Um, motion and a second. Again, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item 12. Um, conduct a public hearing for the purchase of a budgeted unmanned aerial system. Um, do we have a dog and pony show? Do we have like pictures of this really cool $30,000 drone or? Not really, sir, no. No. Oh, fine. All right. Um, so the Coon Rapids Police Department s started a, uh, or Mr. Chief, did you want to do this? Mr. Mayor, you're probably more than capable, but actually I can, I can give you a broad overview of where we're at uh, with okay. this, is that um, the Minnesota legislature has specific requirements for purchase of a drone. We call it unmanned aerial, um, unmanned aerial system, um, but the, we're talking about a drone. Um, many years ago, drones were thought of as somewhat controversial for civilian law enforcement use. Um, our legislature put in place a number of rules, of one of which is to hold a public hearing to make sure that the public clearly understands what the purpose of the program is and authorizes the police department or civilian law enforcement to use the device. So we have an existing drone. Um, the drone has limitations and we're finding the drone has been very helpful in a number of really uh, significant incidents. Uh, generally speaking, when we're looking for somebody, um, and generally we're looking for somebody in the dark when they're hard to find, and the new device has enhanced capabilities with a searchlight, with better camera systems, um, heat signature, being able to pick up on heat signature, so thus we made the budget proposal last year for, to spend 32000 for uh, this particular device. But I, I do want to... Um, Add into this, though, is that another piece that we're looking into, we, we've had a robust discussion recently about search warrants, specifically no-knock search warrants and police making entry into homes. Um, and the use of a drone can, it actually help us. It can go into a house or can go into a building and search without people putting people in harm's way, either the person we're looking for or for the officers who are doing the looking. Um, that said is that I think I'll probably be coming back to you with something that um, where the Coon Rapids Crime Prevention Association, I think most of the council members know of this group of people that like to help out the police department in a variety of ways, but they're interested in, in uh, purchasing a small or a much smaller, physically smaller um, drone system that would be better suited for flying indoors. This particular one that we're talking about purchasing is pretty good size makes it a little tricky to move around in an in enclosed space, but I'm gonna be coming back to you with another conversation about this because the Crime Prevention Association would like to buy one for the city because um, we want to get this going as soon as possible and it's an unbudgeted item. Um, events in Minneapolis made pretty clear that we have to 
we have to be open to using technology in different ways to, to, and to leverage the devices that exist. So without muddying the, the subject too much more than I already have, <laughs> um, we want to allow the public an opportunity to weigh in on, on having a drone. There's a detailed document in the council agenda items about how we use the current drone, the capabilities of the new one that we're purchasing. There's also details in writing regarding what, the, what Minnesota statute requires. Um, I do have uh, the, the uh, commanders, I guess, if you will, of our uh, drone program here present to answer any questions if there's somebody in the audience who wants to know something that's more detailed than I might have. All right. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead, Council Member Geisler. I just said, you know, Chief Weiss, could you talk a little bit about um, the training that our officers get to actually operate <coughs> this in our city as well? Well, I can give you the broad overview in that the FAA or Federal Aviation Administration has very specific requirements for the training of the pilot so that they understand the limitations of the airspace. We can't use airspace that interferes with commercial traffic, air traffic. And uh, accordingly, as a government entity, there are a number of rules regarding pilot training. And we have eight officers that are currently licensed by the FAA to operate a drone. It's not just anybody can do it. Um, this device, especially given the dollar amount of the device, has to be flown by somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, so um, if you want to know more about the specifics of training, I'm sure Sergeant Jacobson could provide you an idea of how many hours of training and what they go through in, in terms of their individual training. But all I know is they're all FAA certified. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's really what I wanted to help make sure it gets out, that it's not just backyard folks hey I got a drone in my backyard that it is very run very professionally FAA certified highly trained people who would be running this absolutely and actually reminding me because especially for the public who's listening to this who maybe might not want to read that what's in the council agenda is that um, it's never flown just for fun it's never flown to spy uh, the, it can't be used with facial recognition technology. It's not allowed to be a weapon in any circumstance. Um, it's the, the legislature wrote a common sense approach to this from a citizen's perspective, and it's a great tool for us. We appreciate the use that we have of it. Um, we would never jeopardize uh, the ability to have this by it being allowed or even considered to be misused. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Councilor Hernandez Jr. Um, was there any feedback from other cities, wins, losses, any kind of stats or um, things that worked, things that didn't work, and kind of the, uh, the usage amount um, for those? If, if I might just dovetail on that just for uh, Chief Wise, they're not just used for law enforcement purposes, they're also used for search and rescue purposes and things like that, so if you could just the experience that we have in Anoka County on using these things is quite a positive experience, I think. Yes, thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Well, yeah, search and rescue is a function of law enforcement, too. Yeah. But yes, missing child, missing Alzheimer's person, <coughs> um, the ability to search a large area that's hard to get around in is greatly enhanced. Um, despite the fact we're a fully developed city, we actually we have a fair amount of woods and wooded areas and swampy areas and all sorts of places that are very hard to to walk through, especially when it's in the winter time. And one of the things specifically with this new one is it has a better battery because um, cold weather does a number on the batteries for them. So um, I don't know, are you prepared? Do you want to talk about a specific success story, something? Because I know we have a number of them that have popped up. I mean, I didn't, didn't ask them to be prepared with, a, with one, but I'm willing to bet Sergeant Jacobson has something that comes to mind. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I have, I have. I do have some numbers as as required by law. I report to the state of Minnesota every year. With every time that we use the drone without a warrant, I have to report that to the state. Um, so in 2020, August 1st is when that took effect. Um, after August 1st, we deployed the UAS 17 times without a search warrant. A majority of those were training flights because it was a um, a newer 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 program at the time. Um, in 2021, we deployed the UAS 36 times without a warrant. Again, a lot of those were training flights. However, we have used it in situations such as recently uh, on the Mississippi River. Uh, there was uh, somebody on a canoe who went through the ice. 
and we had the UAS up overhead while the firefighters uh, assisted in getting them out of the water. Um, we've used it in searching for missing and endangered persons, um, suicidal persons. Uh, that's a lot of what we're seeing. Uh, we also work with other agencies, so we've brought our UAS to other cities. If we don't have a pilot working, they also bring, um, they can also bring it to our city as well. Uh, Noka County Sheriff's Office and the Columbia Heights Police Department in Anoka County also have uh, UAS programs. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Sergeant. Yeah. All right, Councilman Ray Rower. Um, I just wanted to add I'm in strong support of purchasing a drone and Chief I want to thank you for your leadership of the Police Department in Coon Rapids. Uh, I appreciate the focus that you all have on the safety of our residents and our officers. I think it'll be a great tool. Um, it's very likely it could be, be a life-saving piece of equipment and therefore it's well worth the cost when you think of possibly saving a life. Um, and I'm glad that you've come and asked for this and uh, definitely come and ask when you need other forms of support. Thank you. To, to be clear, he's not asking for money tonight though. He's already got the money. Well, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, if there are no other questions, I'm gonna open the public hearing. Is anybody here to address council for the public hearing on the purchase of this drone? Is anybody here to address the council uh, for the public hearing for the purchase of this drone or the drone rules or anything about the drone? Then we will close the public hearing. And I think that's all we had to do, correct? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor Griscovia. If I wanted to make a comment, should I have done it in the public hearing that you just closed or are we done? I, <laughs> Well, you probably even before the public hearing, right. that was kind of our time. But yeah. go ahead. What do yeah. you got? Well, I just wanted to I just wanted to say that um, you know the use of drones has been controversial in the past. It, it's written in our packet. It's pretty clear that there's a lot of really tight regulation on this. As you mentioned, you use the drone; it has to be reported to the state. Uh, as noted in there, it, it's not for surveilling our constituents or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to kind of point that out that privacy and our constitutional rights are foremost in utilizing a device like this. So I just wanted the, the community to know that this is all pretty much written in our, in our packet and you can find more of that in the, in the state documents too, but I uh, just wanted to note that. All right, thank you. Um, all right, item 13 is to conduct a public hearing for vacation of public road easement and adopt resolution 22-38. Uh, this particular vacation is related to the redevelopment of a 40-acre parcel north of Rapids Honda that is being platted into a four-lot development. <clears throat> As part of that plat and an agreement with the developer of the parcel, council is being asked to consider vacating the public road easement. This public road easement is unusual in that it was awarded as part of a civil jury trial in 1996 involving the city and the former property owner the court ordered that there was a um, public road by common law and statutory dedication. The road was legally described as, from, okay, as an aside, <laughs> I don't think we need to read the legal description. No. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, all right, so on February 15th, 2022, council adopted resolution 22-33 to consider a vacation of a public road easement. The process for vacating an easement under the city's charter requires a public hearing and passage of a resolution. So tonight we're looking to first um, hold a public hearing um, and then we'd be looking to adopt a resolution for the vacation. Does anybody need more information on this before we open the public hearing? Anything else you wanted to say about it? Anyone? All right, then we will open the public hearing for the vacation of the public road easement. Um, anybody here to address council for the vacation of the public road easement? All right, so then with that, we will close the public hearing and look to council. Your Honor. Councilman Ray Rower. I make a motion to adopt resolution 22-38 to consider the vacation of a public road easement and order a public hearing for the unnamed roadway that was previously ordered in illegal action. I'll second it. Thank you. Motion by Ray Rower, second by Johnson. Any discussion? Just a point of reference. There's a typographical. We're not ordering any public yeah. hearing. We just had it. So you're yeah, just ordering confusing. the vacation. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you want to amend the uh, okay, resolution or your 
motion to that effect. I well, will amend my uh, my motion. My motion is to adopt resolution 22-38 to consider the vacation of a public road easement. Second. All right. Um, now is there any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Griscoviak. Oddly enough, I was right near this, uh, this piece of property today and it's, you know, it's not used as a road anymore, so it's just kind of a money mess back there. But the question that I had maybe goes to Tim Himmer on this. There is potentially uh, that same area to be used as a trail. Is that correct in the future? Yes, that's correct, Councilmember. And so, so we're, getting, we're, <laughs> we're getting rid of the easement, but we're going to need an easement for a trail. I'm just, how does that work? Councilmember Skowiak, you may recall a month, month and a half yep. ago, there was a settlement agreement which provided the trail, the necessary trail easement to construct that. So um, this, this roadway easement would have been on side lot of a, a residential parcel. So we had to vacate um, to eliminate any public access to that location. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not the same exact strip? No. Okay, so we're getting rid of one easement. We have another one for our trail already in place. That's correct. Got it. Just wanted to make sure. And that okay. one's coming up later on tonight's uh, yep. agenda. <laughs> and I don't know who came up with this legal description. <laughs> well, I know oh, yeah. he didn't read it, but, but I but wish the, he did. The funny part about the legal description is that it ends with, to the eastern edge of Doyle Rogers' garage. Yeah. <laughs> per exhibit. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is still there, by the way. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Safely. <laughs> it's been over. We're vacating. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Any other, any other discussion? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, and then we're up to item 15, which is why we've got all the fire brass in the room 14. tonight, I see. 14. Are we at 14? We're at 14. Wait a minute. Hold it. Oh, I, up, I, I wrote on the wrong thing. Sorry, guys, I jumped ahead. We got another vacation. In we have yeah. another vacation. Yeah. All right. We'll go back to that. Thank you. Con <laughs> conduct a public hearing and vacation of a street and utility easements and adopt resolution 22-39-8945 Evergreen Boulevard. Um, and this is back to that Conforti Holdings. At the December 16th uh, Planning Commission meeting, Conforti Holdings received conditional site plan approval to construct a building expansion and other site improvements at 8945 Evergreen Boulevard. And as part of that approval, drainage and utility easements need to be vacated. On February 15th, 2022, Council adopted Resolution 22-34 to consider vacation of drainage and utility easements. A new easement has been drafted and is included under a separate action for Council's approval. All utilities have been notified and there are no objections. The process for vacating an easement under the city's charter requires a public hearing and passage of a resolution. City staff recommends uh, what we're looking to um, do the public hearing in the resolution. So, does anybody have any questions before we open the public hearing? And much like the last one, we're not going to order another public hearing. Yep. <laughs> Right. Yeah, even though we recommend <laughs> that. Okay. This is the public hearing. This is your one shot. If you uh, are here to address council during the public hearing for the vacation of the street and utility easements um, for Conforti Holdings, 8945 Evergreen Boulevard, now is the time. Anybody here to address council during the public hearing for that? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 22-39 to consider a vacation of drainage and utility easements um, at 8945 Evergreen Boulevard. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Carlson. Any uh, discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Can we go to the fire station now? Yes. yes. Awesome, all right. Item 15 is to consider resolution 21-65 sub 9 awarding contracts for the fire station number three. Uh, Mr. Himmer, Mr. Stemwittle, Chief Piper, who wants to talk about this? Mayor Council, I can kick it off. There were a lot of people involved, so if, if there needs to be uh, questions answered or additional detail, um, by all means, people can uh, add that later on. So this is a project the City Council has been uh, talking about for about a year now, actually more than a year. 
Um, this would be one of the more significant steps in the process in moving this project forward. Um, so back in December, council approved moving forward with the bids uh, for this project. Uh, we had anticipated that uh, we would have approved those bids several weeks ago. However, there were a few that we rejected and rebid or quoted in a different way. And so all of those uh, proposed bids are before the city council tonight. Um, I'll just comment, I think overall, uh, the bids came back fairly successfully, especially in this difficult bidding environment, the cost of materials, of labor, um, difficulty in achieving labor and materials for that matter make construction fairly expensive. The overall um, number, if you kind of scroll down to that $13.22 million number, is within about 2% of what was projected back in November and December. Um, so that's why we felt like it was fairly successful. There is a little bit of anxiety over whether or not it would come back, much more significant than that. And, um, but with the fact that it did come within that 2% number, staff is comfortable making a recommendation to the city council to move forward on the project. So with that, uh, we do have representatives from our construction management team here, as well as Quinn from our architect team. And as you mentioned, there are members of the fire department and Mr. Himmer himself, who is much more familiar with the bid process than I am, um, that can answer questions if you have anything specific to those. Okay, does anybody have any presentations they would feel better presenting tonight before we go into questions? Yeah. Mayor Council, we were not uh, anticipating a presentation. We can okay. provide uh, some uh, visuals well, I mean, if the city the council, yes. Times, yeah. <laughs> including the flyer on the last time, right. which was very cool. Yes. You know, but the, the bid's within 2%. I thought there might be some more gloating or something. No. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, we thought we'd keep it pretty simple. All right. Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. I'm going to make a motion to adopt resolution number 21-65, parens 9, Close parens, awarding contracts for the Coon Rapids Fire Department number three, building package as described in the agenda. Second. Motion by um, Johnson, second by Geisler. Further discussion? I really want to thank um, the staff and Kinghorn Construction in particular. Um, I, I've been trying to uh, control expectations of people by saying this could be $15 million potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and when I saw the number come in where it did and saw how the bids came out, I was very pleased uh, with how that all uh, came together. Um, I think we have a, a particular project that is going to be built, which is going to become a real a key piece of infrastructure for the city. It's going to protect the health, safety, and well-being of firefighters. That's all been part of the the plan for this building, and it's going to become, um, frankly, a community fire station where training can be done and other things can be done. It, it'll be state of the art, uh, but the way it's constructed, the way it's laid out, uh, with all of the input that everybody's had, I think it will serve the citizens of Coon Rapids for decades to come. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about it. And I, and I think the important words to get in there is regional training facility. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. right. So Mr. Stemmel, you get your hand Mayor up. Council, uh, just as a point of clarification, you know, the bids that are being presented are related to the contracts and subcontracts for the construction of the building, mm -hmm. which uh, equal about $13.2 million. There are other costs associated sure. with the project that get us into that $15 plus million dollar range, some of which we've already expended through our city uh, construction manager, our architect, um, other things we've done on the site to make sure it's site ready. Um, but this is obviously the by far the largest number that will be presented mm -hmm. to you following this item is an item for the construction management services. Uh, we are recommending Kinghorn Construction. Um, and that will be the vast majority of the cost presented going forward. There will be a few other things um, not necessarily handled through a bid process or even at a council level other than through the budgeting process related to furniture, fixtures, and equipment, things of that nature, mm -hmm. all of which were sort of anticipated in the larger rolled up budget, um, but aren't necessarily anticipated tonight. When, they've, when the, the very first conversation we had about this, the discussion was 15 million. Mm -hmm. And right. I was so afraid it was gonna come in about 18 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And so when I saw the total, total, total on the next thing that is slightly less than 15 million, it was like, oh, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Mayor, I think Councilor we should also Geisler. recognize our architects, CNH, for, you know, so we've got them there here tonight, as well as Kinghorn, and with our staff, the, you know, Chief Piper and um, 
Assistant Chief Johnson and Mr. Hammer with all of the work that the staff and our partners have done. I think we're going to have a great building and, you know, with, with all of this, I think, but um, spring of 2022 that we could start to break ground and that's like Spring was this week, so like now. <laughs> you've got at least three months before it's summer, right? So I think people will start to see some action um, on that site relatively quickly, which will be very exciting. All right. Mr. Mayor. Um, Councilor Burgoskoviak. I'd just like to point out a couple of things, and one would go to Chief Piper for, you know, kind of leading this effort. We are overdue for this fire station in this community. It was noted earlier that we, you know, have the biggest population in and the biggest fire department in the Anoka County. And so I've looked at a lot of other fire stations around Anoka County, Lionel Lakes and Blaine and Anoka. I looked at that. and. Everything that they wanted or might be missing from their fire stations is included in this. So I wanted to thank the architects on this. The biggest thing for me is how we've built in all these aspects for the health and safety of the firefighters. Mm -hmm. That is so key. I mean, these people are out, you know, running into burning buildings and protecting us all the time. And so we need to invest to make sure that they stay safe and healthy. So there's a lot of stuff in there and maybe even some more things that we can do in that uh, but uh, this is a building that's going to serve our community for decades uh, well past i'm on the council probably well past i'm on this planet um, so uh, just a lot of collaborative effort to do this and bring this to our community so i'm looking forward to supporting this excellent all right um chief viper anything you wanted you were kind of chomping at the mic there you're you're, you're good <laughs> No, oh, Mayor Council, I, I, I guess most of what I was going to say has already been said, uh, thanks to everybody that's here, but uh, just as far as the design team goes, in addition to the names that have already been mentioned, uh, Matt, of course, was a big part of it, and Javad, who's not here tonight, uh, from the city side, and then, of course, out of Quinn's office, there's a couple other uh, people from uh, you know his office, so a lot of people put time and effort into it. A lot of hours went into it in the end uh, because what uh, Council Member Grishkoviak's already said, I mean, some of the keys is the health and safety of the firefighters. And then on the training side, I mean, what we do to be safe, efficient, uh, uh, to serve our customers well, you have to train. And we're so fortunate that thanks to CNH uh, uh, and, and the work they've done with fire stations across the metro, we built so many features into it so Assistant Chief Johnston and his training duties can 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 take our training to a new level. So that's a big part of it. And then, of course, the last thing, uh, which it was talk about the, the regional asset of the North Metro Specialized Rescue Team is able to make use of the tower there uh, to do what they do. So uh, again, I'm uh, grateful for the, the way the project turned out, and it's a direct result of everybody that's involved. Excellent. Thank you. All right, well, we should probably wrap this up. Any other discussion here? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all, and thank you, Kinghorns, for being here. <clears throat> Mayor? Um, yes? Uh, just uh, Mayor, Council, just as a final thought, uh, we do what we do because of the support you give us. So as Chief, I'll speak on behalf of all the firefighters of Coon Rapids. Thank you for your ongoing support. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Chief. And then in two more items, we actually get to hire that construction management team. So, <laughs> all right. Item 16, though, is to uh, consider planning case 22-3, consider adoption of ordinance 2260, rezoning 3745 Main Street Vista Outdoors. Um, <clears throat> is this a new item, or do we need to remove the old one from the table, Mr. Brody? Because I, I believe we tabled. We tabled it, and I think we didn't give a definite date, so it might make some sense. And it wouldn't do us any harm if we had a motion to, to remove it from the table. Okay. Oh, since I moved to put it on the table, I'll move to remove it from the table and put this item on the agenda. Second. Okay, okay. motion by Johnson, second by Carlson to remove it from the table. Probably no discussion on that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And it's off the table. And now we are going to consider planning case 22-3, consider adoption of ordinance 2260, rezoning 3745 Main Street Vista Outdoors. Um, does anybody have any questions on where we're at now? No questions. Mm -hmm. May I, Your Honor? 
Councilmember Johnson. So we had a workshop on this, and, and I think it was a really helpful workshop and, and appreciate Vista coming in and talking to the council about it. I think uh, that helped answer a lot of the questions that people had on their mind um, about the rezoning and what things um, were planned for the property. Uh, with that then, in planning case 22-3, I'm going to move to adopt the ordinance um, in the proposed rezoning based on the following three conditions that are noted in the agenda. That the proposed rezoning be compatible with the adjacent land uses and zoning. The proposed rezoning would not have an adverse impact on the surrounding area. And the proposed rezoning is consistent with the future land use guidance and policies of the 2040 Comprehensive Plan. Second. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Ray Rauer. Discussion. Do we need to be specific and say it's Ordinance 2260 just for clarity? Or is that implied? We, option of Ordinance 2260. Because it's see. not in, in there. They didn't write it with it. Okay. So. You good to that, Mr. Brody? Doesn't hurt to add that in there. Okay. okay. I'll. Uh, amend my uh, motion to include reference to ordinance 2260 number 2260 which is set forth in the agenda okay. and you're good with that councilmember Ray Rauer yes second. Be a second I believe okay all right further discussion and I do thank you guys for coming to the workshop and for for bearing with us on this project sorry it's all right all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, item 17, consider construction management services for the Coon Rapids Fire Department number three, project 21-65. Uh, Mr. Himmer, you, wanted, you want me to read this description or you want to hit on it? Mr. Mayor, I can touch on the highlights. Um, as we talked about with the award of contracts for fire station number three, Kinghorn Construction does have a master consulting agreement with the city. Um, we are recommending award of construction management contract with them. Uh, it's going to cover their profit overhead as well as general conditions, pass-through costs for dumpsters, BIFs, site trailers, and such. So um, that information is laid out in the attachment, and I'm happy to stand for any questions you have. <clears throat> I had a conversation unrelated with somebody whose initials are Grady Kinghorn the other day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I like the fact that he'll be driving by this every day when he goes home, again, <laughs> keeping an eye on it. So, so not only will he be paying for it from his taxes, he'll, uh, he'll also be overseeing it. And, and Mr. Ray, I, I, I think John will be... Kinghorn will be driving past it every day as well. Yeah. So I think we're going to have double coverage of, of the site. So yeah. Is, Have you had a project this close to your house? <laughs> 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 nope. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good one. All right. Um, okay, so Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to accept the proposal for construction management services for the Coon Rapids Fire Department number three from Kinghorn Construction and authorize execution of the letter of engagement in accordance with their master consulting or master contracting agreement approved December 3rd, 2019. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Carlson. Further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscoviak. Does, does this agreement go back and cover the assistance that was provided by Kinghorn during the getting, bidding process itself, what we just uh, went through? Or is this a new agreement outside of that? Councilmember Skowiak, this is just for the construction services. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other discussion or questions? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. All right. Nice. <laughs> um, item 18, to consider planning case 19-18, consider resolution 22-40, approving the final plat for Pheasant Hollow, 12031 Partridge Street, North Star Improvements. Um, we've looked at this several times. Mr. 
Uh, Fernelius, is anything you wanted to present or? Mr. Mayor, just real briefly. So this is the final plat for the uh, Pheasant Hollow subdivision. This is a site, rather large site at, located at the end of Partridge in 121st Lane. This preliminary plat was approved, as you might recall, back in March of 2020. And then there was an extension granted in 2021 to March of this year. Um, and as you talked about in a previous item uh, in which there was a vacation, this plat also includes the 20 foot trail easement along the north property line. Um, vacation, which was accomplished tonight, was, is uh, one of the requirements or conditions of approval. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. There are seven conditions related to um, granting final plat approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Maybe somebody's calling one in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions on this or need any further information? Your Honor. Council Member Ray Rower. For planning case 19 18, I recommend the, or I move the council to approve resolution 22 40, granting final plat approval with the following conditions that are listed, conditions numbers one through seven. As listed. Mr. Brody, do you want those red or no, that good? That's, that's sufficient. All right. Second. Motion by Ray Rauer, second by Geisler. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item 19 is to, uh, we're being asked to adopt an emergency ordinance. Um, doesn't seem like, doesn't feel like an emergency, but um, re redistricting the ward boundaries and adopt a resolution establishing precinct, precinct boundaries. Um, does somebody want to? Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. Ms. Lensmeyer. As you stated before you tonight is the adoption of the ward boundaries as we discussed at the March 8th Council work session. We had a few options and the Council recommended the option one, which affects 253-ish people that's attached to the agenda. Um, the reason for the emergency ordinance is timing. We didn't get the boundaries from the court until the middle of February, and so then we've got the deadline of the 29th. So that's why we do the emergency ordinance. And um, I'll have, if you have any questions, I can answer them. The, as we stated in the memo, residents that are impacted will be notified by the county through a mailed postcard. And we will be, we wrote an article to go out in the newsletter, which goes out tomorrow. We've got it ready to go. If approved tonight, that will be their first notice and we'll post everything on the website. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised we don't have to do a public hearing along with this, but uh, apparently not, huh? All right. Not required. <laughs> what? It's not required, but. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on this? No, no. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I just that's wanted to add, are. it's just a very small group uh, neighborhood that's in my ward currently. It's going to be moving to Ward 5, and the change is due to population changes. So Ward 2, which I'm in, population grew, and so it, we needed to move a line. It's basically um, some neighborhoods along North Northdale Boulevard. And with that, I... Make a motion to adopt the emergency ordinance 2262 redistricting ward boundaries and adopt resolution 22 43 establishing precinct boundaries. And that's second. Do you need them separated? Yes, Councilmember okay. Rayar, if you wouldn't mind taking one at a time because one of them requires five votes just I to make think it clean. I'm 0 for 3 tonight. Okay, here we <laughs> go. Right. I make a motion to approve the emergency ordinance 2262 redistricting ward boundaries. Second. Motion by Ray Rower, second by Carlson, to adopt the emergency ordinance 2262 redistricting ward boundaries. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. You want to continue? Yes, and I make a motion to adopt resolution 22-43 establishing precinct boundaries. Second. Motion by Ray Rower, second by Carlson. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscoviak. If I could just ask um, administration, you said you were gonna post this information, the maps and stuff on the website. If you could just include the house and uh, the Minnesota house 
and Senate district lines that show in there too. I know a lot of those changed and some of my neighbors are asking, you know, where which, which, where I'm in. Yeah. I think if we could do it all in one, that'd be great. Yep, yeah, of course, we'll take care of it. Your Honor. Okay. Ray I have one last thing to add. If you accidentally call me and you are moved, I will still take your phone call. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are up to the open mic public comment. Is anybody here to address council for open mic this evening? Open mic? All right. I don't have any reports on previous open mics. Um, and we're up to other business. What do we, what do we have? Anybody have anything for other business? Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. I think I should probably make an announcement at this point in time. So we, we are kind of coming into um, an election year, an election season, and I'm going to announce that I will be leaving my council seat in Ward 5 at the end of the year, mm. so in December. So this seat that I have right now, which is Ward 5, uh, will become open for 2023. Um, and if anyone is interested in reaching out to me, uh, feel free to give me a call. Uh, send me an email. I'm happy to share thoughts, bring people up to speed. I've already had a couple of people reach out and ask questions about that. I think this gives me, though, a little bit of a unique opportunity to express um, a little, I hope, pardonable pride in my time here on uh, the city council. I have learned so much from each and every one of you and each and every one of the staff in here. Um, when I look around this council table and I've gotten the benefit of the impressions from Council Member Carlson, Council Member Rerauer, I've gotten to start getting to know Council Member Hernandez Jr., Council Member Griscoiak, of course Mayor Cook and uh, Council Member Geisler, but even the council members that were here before, Denise Clint, um, you know, you, you have Steve Wells, who I sat next to for years. Um, you have uh, Ron Manning was here, and Wade Demmer, of course, when I was here. And I, I kind of came up with a slogan that I think fits the city of Coon Rapids and how we operate um, really well. And the slogan is, we all do better when we all work together. Um, and the reality is, is that this city, um, has taught me a lot about finding ways to collaborate positively with people. And we've done that um, in so many different ways. You heard about it tonight. It, it's a little bit of an anomaly in cities around Anoka County because we end up at these meetings, you know, with sometimes voting against each other, but sometimes and often voting together on things because we work out any differences we might have before we come into the, the council chamber. Um, as a prosecutor, as a child protection lawyer, I look at the track record we've had on putting public safety first uh, in this community. Um, and I think it bears note uh, when you look back at it, how amazing this city staff has been in putting things before us that can help us improve the delivery of service for here in, um, in Coon Rapids. If you just look at things, we now have a detective that's a 24-hour detective. We have a plan for bolstering our police department with additional officers, same with the fire department. We've made improvements to the evidence room in the police department to protect our officers so they don't get exposed to harmful chemicals that they might have when they uh, seize evidence or when they come across evidence. We've added a social worker that we've attached to the police department that we share with Blaine. Our city attorney's office collaborates and does prosecution work for the city of Fridley. We have a new fire station three that we all voted for today. Um, we're really at the cutting edge in the, in the city and in the county and in the region on having the ability to use a drone to save people's lives. I, this is not where we were eight years ago when I came on the, sit, the city council. And I just really want to express my appreciation to everybody here, Matt Stemwettle, Dave Brody, Chief Wise, uh, 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 Joan Lensmeyer, our clerk, Tim Himmer, Grant Fernelius, um, 
I've learned so much from all of you, um, and I'm going to miss um, being on the city council. But I think that that there will be others that will be able to carry this on, and you will be the best to teach them how to, to do a good job. The reason I'm leaving is that uh, there's an open seat in the county attorney's office in 2023, and I'm going to run for county attorney in the county. Um, and I'd, I'd like to carry the lessons that I've learned here, just as Council Member Schulte did when he went on to the county board. Um, I think this was a wonderful training ground and a wonderful experience, and I would uh, look forward to an opportunity to continue to serve the citizens of Coon Rapids and others in the county um, into the future as a county attorney. So. You're, you're coming back next month, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, oh, okay. I, good. I said, All right. I said I'm going I'm, I'm to be here until December. <laughs> win, win, lose, or draw. But, but there you go. Thank you for the opportunity, and and uh, thank you for listening to me, and thank you for sharing your thoughts with me, and uh, thank you for always being open to talking things through with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Mr. Stemwell, that hand is almost up. What do you yes. got? Mayor and Council, uh, it's something we talk about from time to time, but I thought this was a good juncture to mention it again. So property value notices are being sent out. Um, if you haven't received it yet, you should be receiving it this week. Um, and so it provides you um, really the property value for your taxes payable in 2023. And it's important to note that values have increased substantially across the city, um, especially to residential values, um, and to the tune of, on average, 19.1% um, to our residential homes. So the past several years of a hot housing market have um, snuck into property values. So what I, I mentioned that because of two reasons. One, I don't want people to equate necessarily that a 19.1% property value increase equates to a 19.1% property tax increase. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, just know that that's not necessarily the case. Really what happens to your property tax um, is related to your value, of course, but is uh, a much more complicated formula than simply that. The other reason I mentioned it is it's important to pay attention to what's going on with your value in the sense that if you have questions, concerns, or you would want to um, have a, an opportunity to debate that value, uh, those opportunities are coming up. And so your notice will indicate that there's a, a chance to present your case to the Board of Appeal and Equalization, which is the body of the City Council. That meeting will happen on April 26. Um, but really, there are a lot of opportunities prior to that to have your questions answered. And nine times out of ten, if not more than that, those questions can be answered uh, through contact, contacting our property assessment staff here at City Hall and so they can explain to you how that value was arrived at. If there are concerns, you say, well, it, it says that I've got a finished basement and I only have a partial finished basement or uh, whatever the question may be, they may want to come out and visit your home and take a look at it. And there are a lot of instances where they look at it and go, okay, you're right, our assumptions um, were inaccurate and so we're going to reduce the value by you know, this amount. Um, so the opportunity to do that is the next month, um, and there are other opportunities after that to get a little more complicated, uh, so I won't get into that right now. So I just wanted to mention that for the folks that are hopefully listening at home, that they're, the best way to resolve that right now is to contact property assessment and go from there. That's a really good clarification. That they're, they're, the home values went up almost 20%, mm -hmm. pretty much everywhere in the county. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but the only way your property taxes are also going to go up 20% is if we raise the levy 20% also. <laughs> and I don't see us do, well, we didn't do that. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, Council yeah, Geiser? I, I think the one thing that's always cl critical to let people know about is, so in the spring here you get your property valuation. And if you think that your property is not correctly valued, now is the time to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to do it. Because next fall, when you get your tax statements for 2023, all of the formulas, they use that value as part of that calculation. If you come back in November and say, but my value is wrong, we can't help you. Now is the time to do something if you think that value is incorrect. So, you know, the two things are, related um, it's not a direct 
you know, obviously changing your property value to your change in your taxes. However, that number is used in the calculation. So if it's wrong, now is the time to change it, or at least ask the question. Uh, other business to come before council? I'd like to. Well, from her, her as junior. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, the sports and the youth are, you know, my foundation uh, in the city. And I just want to acknowledge the Coon Rapids uh, boys high school team on their tremendous season this season. Uh, Coach Michael Gorick and his staff did an outstanding job. They're one game short of state tournament. Uh, very exciting game, very exciting season. Um, known Coach O'Gurk for many years. He's done a lot of great things for the Coon Rapids community uh, with the youth, the high school team. So I just want to acknowledge um, Michael Gorick and his staff and the Coon Rapids High School uh, Cardinals on their outstanding season this uh, this year and hope that uh, they can uh, go a little bit further next year. And for uh, we, they got a good crop of uh, – uh, underclassmen coming in also, so it's it's gonna be pretty exciting. So I'm just I just want to just uh, acknowledge and give them a good shout out. So they were so good this year. I was watching them on TV, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which I yes. haven't done in prior years. Yes. <laughs> so. And then Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Geiser. Um, for anybody who hasn't already seen it, Thursday, so in two days, between one and three, there's a drive-by food drive. So here at um, City Hall for the A. ABCBC food shelf. So anybody who um, wants to contribute to the food shelf, drive on by with food on Thursday between 1 and 3 at City Hall. The uh, article they used, the picture they used in the article for promoting that showed our, old, our own council member Carlson loading food in the back of the truck. Apparently it was a warmer day, he was wearing shorts. Well, the Carlsons will be there on Thursday. There'll be two of us this time. Yeah. Well, well, your wife was there too. Yeah. All right, um, other business to come before council? Move to adjourn. Second. Sec Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And we are adjourned. Aye.